You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly. Hello and welcome to another episode of Allegedly NYC. I'm Nomi Ruiz. And I'm Ava San Jurjo. And we are just two Puerto Rican girls with nothing else to do but talk a lot of shit. <laughs> talking shit. That's all I do. Girl, talking so, shit. That's just keeping me alive right now is talking and shit. Fill our glasses with rosé. Oh, you, you got rosé? Rosé for Rose McGowan, oh. who's joining us today. Applause, applause. I mean, she is our punk rock dream girl. Like, she is. She's fucking awesome. She's fucking. I'm so excited. I can't believe it. I won't believe it until she's actually on because she actually was texting me and she's like she's having trouble with her Wi-Fi because she's like in the jungle somewhere. Of so she is. she's in the jungle because she's she's just this fabulous animal. Yeah, she's like I gotta go. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting out of town, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to Rose. Cheers to Rose. And cheers to you, everyone who's been listening, who's been tuning in. Sorry for the technical difficulties. We've been having a lot of, like, we're learning the system. We don't have production yeah. team. I am the production team. <laughs> so be yes, easy on me. Absolutely, yes. Be no, easy you know what? Me. To be honest, girl, if Channel 5 is having a problem, we're going to be having a problem. Everyone's just learning the ropes here. If so, The View is um, having a problem, if Naomi Campbell if view, yeah, exactly. is having technical difficulties. But Rose hey, is coming, so we got a problem. We're fine. I promise you we're getting better. And guess what? We have I'm listening. I'm listening. a Patreon. Oh! Part, patron me? <laughs> Excuse me. So our patrons get, first of all, just give us coins. Because we got to keep the lights on in this establishment you know it costs extra Girl. to get the show running it's like ecamm Fairly fee better. monthly fees it's the switchboard hey, monthly fees it's the soundcloud it. monthly fees it's the wix page monthly fee it's my vagina's monthly fee so Girl. Girl. it all costs extra if you want okay. more allegedly nyc yeah. first of all vice call us second of all what patreon yeah. five dollars yes. a month you get us. Just, I love a phone call. Love a phone call, and if and if you get if you take the ten ten dollar a month, uh, what do you get? Oh, what do we get? That we gives get, you one in the pinky. You get extra. <laughs> that costs extra. <laughs> <laughs> one in the pinky. One in the stinky. Pick that one. What was it? What was it? Twenty ten. Twenty twenty. <laughs> That was like a lady bunny joke. <laughs> oh, that's a plot. No, we need laughter. Not a plot. <laughs> Sorry, I've had one too many Coronas and I'm on red wine. Anyway, epic day. Are y'all ready for motherfucking Rose McGowan? Don't be coughing on this show, girl. I know, I know. I, everyone's so scared. I have no mask on. Well, by myself, it's fine. <laughs> All right, we're about to go live with motherfucking Rose McGowan. R O S E McGowan. Girl, are you ready? Rose. Roses are red, violets are blue. And this all that's rosy <laughs> this should be you. Show is cheap, <laughs> and so are you. See you soon, doll. You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly. Fear is a big, big thing, you know? And my book is called Brave, the book I wrote. And people are like, how do you get brave? Are you just born that way? And I'm like, no, it means you're scared every minute. You goddamn do it anyway. You, like, you know me, like you. When you live your life out loud as a free person, as a free being, you have to fight. And it's exhausting, like I said. But the thing is, when you make a fear list... A lot of times we just have the fear and it goes around like a hamster wheel in our mind, right? Yeah. But what if you could make a fears list and you're like, what's the worst case scenario? I was a homeless street kid at 13. I was taken in. Back then we called them drag queens. Two drag queens and a, and a lesbian stripper 
her name Tina. You know, I mean, that's what I ran with, right? And uh, these are my people, and I and I saw them have fear, but live their life so freely. Like this is what I am. Suck it. And that's that's also how I live. Yeah. And it oh, it creates that's, that's a lot awesome. of pushback. But you know, so the fearless. I was really scared for most of my career. At the time when I had the most money I had ever made, I was so intensely scared of being homeless again. It would keep me up at night, right? Like that hunger that I had, that street hunger. I was so hungry. And so what I did was um, write down the worst case scenario of all of my fears. The worst case scenario was death. Other than that, I was like, oh, and I, I'm lucky enough to not have schizophrenia. So I thought, well, if I am homeless again, if I do something by burning down Hollywood and taking down Weinstein, um, I, I, I will be able to manage it because I'm lucky enough to you know, not have schizophrenia, which is, makes getting off the street much harder. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's like the worst, I guess, case of fear for everyone. It's like, yeah, fear can't control me. Yeah, it's a deep fear. Mm -hmm. And it's real. And it's like it's this. So and most people are just on this edge. Yeah. So, like, how, what do you, like, now more and more, there are all these stories coming out about, like, people who are isolating in, like, abusive households. And, like, usually, like, you know, the outside world is a space for them to, like, escape, whether it's their job or, like, even just school, kids going to school, and like now they don't sort of have those outlets to just even like send warning signals. You know, now there's like even like women are going to pharmacies to like give code words to the pharmacist to say like, I'm, you know, I'm in danger, like help me. Like, how do you like, and usually I think like now I'm more aware of my like neighbors for some reason. I'm just more aware of like the people like oh. in my immediate space. I'm just like, okay, I need to like be more aware of like the people around me like how do you think like we can look out for each other now that we're more isolated more than ever like how do we how do we i guess fundamentally if you're hearing something if you can hear something through your walls you know i remember this horrible case uh in new york city and i, I wasn't in new york then but i was reading about it where this little kid died of course from abuse and it was in no. new york city in a kind of a fancy apartment everybody around heard but no everyone was like well i don't want my neighbor to get mad at me let him get mad at you let her get mad at you let whoever's yeah. abusing someone get fucking mad at you who yeah. gives a shit have people been mad at you and you survived it yes do the right thing all the calls like i just did um interview with someone in the uk like right now even for men the helpline and i and i think i'm not sure but it might be more queer relationships or same-sex relationships but yeah. the men's hotline for domestic violence in the uk is not percent um, the women's has gone up by 80% and the children. And right now, um, why I did my album Planet Nine and released it right now was because besides the fact that it's music for healing trauma, literally, um, that's why I made it. And, you know, it's a, there's some banger beats on there. Yes. And it's incredibly, like, it feels, right? But... Um, when you buy it, I'm, I, I'm like, woo, you make so much money in music. I made a thousand dollars on Friday. Woo. <laughs> um, but I sent that money. Right. Um, I work with the East Los Angeles Women's Center and it's, it's a little place and it's boots on the ground. It primarily serves low income Latinas and, and impoverished women, but all domestic violence abusers, human trafficking victims and their children. And with that thousand dollars, you know, why I'm urging people to go to rosemcgowan.com um, and if they can afford dollars uh, to buy it off Bandcamp, because 20%, and I'm actually going to give all of it, I don't care. Um, I was going to say 100% at this point. Um, not that I'm rich, not that I couldn't use the money, but I'm housing with that $1,000 I made on Friday. I'm housing four women and three of their children that managed to escape from their abusive households during quarantine. Oh, and they now have an apartment amazing. for a month. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. So that's what we can do. Like little things. I know yeah. a lot of us don't have money right now. So and yeah. It's really scary. Just it just every little bit helps. Yeah, you know? we're not And if on you the floor. hear something, say something. Don't be scared. Exactly. If someone gets mad at you and you were wrong, okay, but you're yeah. wrong. Yeah, have you been but, wrong yeah, exactly. before and survived it? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we've been also the talking film. a lot here about the end of the age of vanity, you know, like where, like I said before, like all these luxuries and like, like kind of celebrity right, matter. right now seems so irrelevant. And so it's, Girl. it's really insane. And it, it makes me look back like, what did it even all mean? Like, what was it all like now? You know, like, do you think this is going to have an effect on celebrity when this is all like, I don't know when we're in our new normal? I think it will affect my guess. 
just to affect the way people they don't worship fame anymore and the idea of it and the idea that you're so lucky if you're famous because I can say from the other side having at times been very famous like when I was on Charmed that um, was like TV fame right. is crazy because you're all over the globe in people's rooms I mean I got I met this I was at the Abbey in West Hollywood and this kid comes up to me I was trying to understand him he had a really thick accent beautiful makeup and he was I figured out what he said and he said I'm a refugee from Baghdad Iraq and um like 10 years ago and he's like and uh Saddam Hussein and Ude and Kuse his sons charmed as their favorite show and I'm like what Shush. like you're very popular in Iraq I'm like what <laughs> Like, that's fame yeah like when you're popular in some random country I am. What? <laughs> when you're popular dictators you know you've made it <laughs> now, um, the idea of fame I, yeah it's gross um, <laughs> that's where J- JLo gave me her money there so that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, JLo goes, she gets those coins from over those seas. She's like, I know, I know you're, it's like, I'm going to have that. <laughs> like the hardest worker I've ever seen, I think. That She's insane. Uh, Every yeah. time I see her, yeah, I'm like, what have her, I man. been doing with myself? <laughs> it's too much. Oh my God. Well, recently you tweeted uh, <laughs> that your book Brave Unwires and your album Planet Nine Heals and uh, culture reset is your work. Yeah, so it is. I would love for you to like tell us uh, how your book Brave unwires, and then how Planet Nine heals. Okay, that's a great question. Thank you, Nomi. <laughs> um, well, honestly, my father was a cult leader, and he was. But if you isolate the word leader, he was an incredible. He was. You know, they didn't think of it as a cult. It was for them utopia. And the way I was raised was really interesting and very different. People judge me as if I come from their world. I really don't. I'm kind of like a wild animal in the forest. I was isolated from people. And for the first 10 years of my life, I was raised without mirrors, largely. Wow. There was, there were no mirrors. And it's a multinational group. And all the women, like I have no memories personally one-on-one with my mother because every woman was called a nanny and it was communal ter- caretaking of the kids. But what they wanted to see is what if we raise these children? So I had like my mom was from America, one was from I think Britain, one lady is from Uganda, one lady, one nanny is from, uh, she was from Darfur. Like it was like people from all over, but they were, but everyone when they joined, they left that outside. And they were like, well, what if right. we lived in a place where none of this matters? And it failed. It was a failed experiment, but they tried. And I think the reason it doesn't work is because ultimately when you have a white male at the head of some powerful organization, you know, the, their vanity and their need for worship will be the best of them, Power. even if they have original intentions. So but I would watch my father wire people's minds. I would watch him, like, wow. take them and kind of – even when he was little, my, my his sister said – that he would go into new neighborhoods where they would move and he would, he was an artist, he was an incredible artist and he would draw like comic books of the neighbor kids and give them names, nicknames and draw storylines for them and they would start acting like it. And they would, they would, oh everyone start calling God. him by the name, he named them and much like Trump, right? Except for my dad wasn't so like, he was put in jail in the military because he kicked out of going to Vietnam because he's like, I will not kill another race for this country. He was super anti-government. And, but I watched him wire people's minds. And I, I actually, because of that skill, I know how to undo it. I don't know how to wow. explain it exactly. But if you read Brave, you will come out 10% different. You will come out more free than you were going in. And you will come out with bravery that you didn't have before. Even if you are brave, you can get more brave. And if you think things differently, I wrote it from the perspective of... Um, I was thinking about Hollywood night, how my whole life was there and how much I hated it and how lonely I was and how miserable I was um, because, well, because horrible things had happened to me yeah. over and over. And it was like relentless, the bad things, you know, like I would go to an event and the fancy actresses would and turn their backs on me, right? And people would come up to me at dinner parties and be like, oh, you seen any good Harvey Weinstein scripts lately? Just to see my reaction. This is before the news broke. This is for years this would go on. Right. Right. Fuck these people. Fuck these people. So, um, fuck them hard. So it was just gross yeah, and, so and traumatizing. Shit. Just constant trauma. Yeah, they're thirsty for that shit, right? Um, 
but with Brave, I break what's called the fourth wall. Um, like it would be me if I was on TV speaking to the audience. I was outside on the couch instead of speaking to the other actor. If I was talking to the actor and then I turn and I'm like, know me, blah, 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 blah. Then I go back into my scene. So I do that in my book. It's kind of a Trojan horse. Like when they, they the Trojans, you know, um, in Greece, they came in on this whole horse thing and they turned out there was all this military underneath and they won the battle. Yeah. So my book is sold as an autobiography and it does have my stories in it. And some of them are really hard. A lot of them are quite funny, but I also break the fourth wall and I speak to the reader and I talk to them. When I wrote it. I was thinking one night and I was like, if I was in Hollywood, who would I be? If this is Oz, right? And Harvey Weinstein is the wizard of Oz. Who am I in this world? And I realized I was the curtain. Wow. I, it was, pretty curtain the velvet curtain the audience and watching those people but not able to talk to them but with all the shit from behind me coming into my head and hitting at me and then the curtains replaced when it's tattered and old and no longer useful all that shit right and i'm like i'm gonna tear what a heavy curtain what a heavy curtain what a heavy curtain holy shit yeah rose Heavy. Girl. And, that and I was just like, no more. And no yeah, one had enough. ever done it really. Not in Hollywood. People complained no, about it. Everyone's so fun scared. Of it that's the thing. About fear. It. It's like this fear that's just but like. It was never takes the over. truth. Oh. They they anybody who's a performer, they instill fear in you. And really yeah. in Hollywood more than True. anywhere else that I've experienced. Like you, you know, you're not special. And I'm like, I actually am special. Yeah. But, but you try to take it all away from your stylist and your stupid makeup artist trying to clone me into everybody else. I came here and I was discovered because I was me. And now, like, through the years, they just take it all away from you. And then you're like, what am I? Who am I? Right. I'm paying people. The face message you get is, like, the messages I would get directly to me, like, you have to have long hair. So the men in Hollywood want to fuck you. If they don't want to fuck you, they won't hire you. That's from a female agent. But that's the inference. That's the information that women in culture get. But right. it's watered down. So you just... They're like, oh, this must be what I have to do. Today. And long hair is beautiful. And if you want it, great. But yeah. look at, do you have? I, it I also remember, like, one of the first, supposed- the first moments I remember, like, your voice coming into my, at least my uh, hemisphere with this okay. topic was when you, when, when you got this, like, uh, like a, a, a call for an audition, and it was like about like the, the way they wrote it, and you were like, I bet you a woman wrote that, a woman had to write that. It was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember she that moment. Have- but she wrote it. Someone that she works with told her to, but she also, it went through to everyone in Hollywood basically got that script with its, it was an Adam Sandler script. And it was like, wear, like in front, wear a push up bra, um, tight leggings, white preferably, or something like that. You know, something, through, something gross. Um, and like, I was like, fuck this shit. And Insane, I tweeted, I took a screenshot yeah. and I tweeted it. And I was, and I was like, name of the star rhymes with Madam Panhandler. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. That was like me with Hut Hoppy, Hut Hoppy. <laughs> like you know. Um, you know and it was just like kind of like and it was what was interesting about that was that i was just like oh what a fucking bunch of losers i'm gonna screenshot this me. but then so many people were outraged and it went i went to sleep and by the morning it was like 150,000 retweets and i'm like oh shit yeah. oops like, um, thing. and then i was like i got scared and then my agency fired me and they blamed right. on a woman manager or agent sending it she had left the job a week before and wasn't my agent so it was all a lie right so I wind up on Good Morning America, and it was really interesting because it helped me gain perspective that, no, this is not. And I was like, this is not normal, but it was confirmed by the outside world. You know? and, yeah. But what you guys with the public doesn't see is what's written in these scripts, not the words that you hear, but the things that they write about the characters and the information they give you. Um, that only the person reading the script sees. So that's their real mind. And I had to even tell friends of mine, like, two years ago, okay, they sent me a script to read, and they go, okay, so let me get this. Tom, comma, 26, a powerful football player, blah, blah, blah. That's all it says. Then it says Rob, right. comma, African-American, 26. And I'm like, but why doesn't Tom have a race? Is that default right. white because he's the lead? Is that what we're, is this, what's going on? So I was like, that's racist as fuck. And that was Hollywood practice. That's always been like that. So when I went public with that bullshit, I was just like, this needs to stop. Yeah. Because that's, it, it informs how you think about everything. And it's 96% men in what's called the Directors Guild of America. That's the union for all the directors. So that's who makes your movies and your product and Netflix and blah. 
but that statistic of 19 of, of 96 percent male hasn't changed since 24 and it's predominantly like 89 percent white male so you're getting this incredibly steady diet of fucking mayonnaise for your mind toxic mayonnaise right toxic yeah, masculinity exactly. on overdrive and especially because they're from hollywood and their brain gets and warped, glamorized and it's like people mayonnaise. People go there and they act and dress and look like they think what they've seen in the movie. Like right. they imitate Emulate. what they've seen in the movie, but it's real life. And then you're doing the movie, but you're imitating the movie. It becomes like really meta and it, it scrambles your brain, you know? It's yeah. hard to keep a moral compass there for sure. It's true. I remember you, you, once, you once said, uh, I was the thing sent out to make you nervous. If a girl went to the movies with her boyfriend, mm-hmm. I was the thing sent out to make her uncomfortable and to be like, don't you want to be like me? It was two choices. The girl either, because I was, I was marketed as a sex symbol in that time. There's no Instagram, there's no Facebook, there's no Twitter. Even if that's only 10% of voice, you're who you are, there was not even that. You had to hope that the interviewer, always usually a man, wasn't going to say nasty things about you, but they always right. did with me um, because Harvey Weinstein paid them to, as it turned out. Um, uh, and I was like, you know, I my book, I talk in my book and I'm like, I write it from the perspective of a cigarette, the product. What if the cigarette could tell you everything that's in it and what it's doing to your body? That's me and Brave telling you what's being done to your mind behind the scenes. Ooh, I love that. Wow. And how wow. it filters out. Like Disney, Prince, Disney, who do you remember out of the Disney movies? Is it the princesses? Oh, girl, that, those Disney movies have brainwashed all the children. Like, I am also wow. still trying to unwind from like, Okay, I'm not the Little Mermaid. I'm not fucking Pocahontas. I'm not guess interested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but guess what? Earth. They only those women, Slubbitch. all I'm those women, Ursula bitch, that red hair, that red flame. Love it. I was more like SpongeBob. Uh, I, I was a Disney. I was like, I like SpongeBob. I well, like Squidward. Well, I'm and, more like I was, but, you know <laughs> Disney movies. The speaking roles are twenty percent women, twenty three percent. Of, of voices in Disney movie, the lines for all women in all Disney films from the beginning to now is 23%. And yet you remember the princess, but she never talks because she only has 23% of the dialogue in all those movies. So what is the messaging oh system? And I talked to single women in my book and I'm like, you know, we've been taught women, period, that this, this guy's going to come up, you know, on this horse, this white horse. But I'm yeah. the only motherfucker on a white horse that I've ever seen. And you're the only motherfucker on a white horse that you've Ditto. seen. So ride yeah. your own damn it's horse. so fucking true. Girl. Yep. And it's, yeah, it's, it's that kind of unwiring that you need to do. Yeah. Take another drink. It's so true. Um, so how does Planet, how is Planet Nine healing like i love how like you gave like sort of like a prescription with the album which was like you know this sort of instruction to how to listen to it in order to get like the best healing quality from it yeah well someone i it was only like 12 days ago i was sitting you know here because that's what i'm doing sitting yeah. um in quarantine i wasn't supposed <laughs> to put it out for a couple more months i just thought um, Planet Nine is for ask for traveling to space, really. It's music, because I was imagining what would happen if I made song, if, if I could drive my car, because I race my car when I'm in LA at night, and what if I could drive and the lanes were made of stars? What music would I want to drive to in space if all the highways and freeways were made of stars? That was the yellow line. Right? I'm really high from this conversation. That stuff. <laughs> and so I found this incredible collaborator who produced my favorite Daft Punk song and these Ooh, other yeah. like really heavyweights. But it was really me like directing the whole experience, mm-hmm. you know? And Beautiful. I... I, I wanted this compulsion to make the album because when I was 10 I created my own planet as a response to the military school in America and being having culture shock my name is Rosa they changed my name to Rose the first day of school and I remember what they said to me they said you don't want to sound Mexican I I went home and asked someone and they were like oh yeah your name is Rose not my parents I was staying with this weird church lady and I was like my name is Rose but my name is Rosa I think someday I'll change it back well, people tell me that all the time with my last name. They're like, just use your first name. They're like, don't use don't use Ruiz. Just like use Nomi. And I'm like, no, but I kind of like. Ruiz. But also, I'm Nomi Ruiz. Right. Same. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, everyone always told me growing up, oh, no one's going to know how to pronounce your name. Opinion. You should change it to yeah. Sans. I was like, if you could all pronounce yeah. names. If you can read, you, we could all pronounce. We could figure pronounce it names. out. Just thumbs up. <laughs> Let's figure it out. I'm not going to change my life. And also, if mispronounces your name, it's not the worst thing in the world. You can revive it. You know, in Italy, yeah, they call me Macagoan. Macagoven. They can't figure out. It's fine. <laughs> yes. Whatever. You know, but just, fine. Just, but Rosa Macagoan. I love her. Ariana. <laughs> I was named after an Italian property. Um, and uh, so Rosa Ariana McGowan is my name. And but so Planet Nine, I created when I was ten. I used to sit and fantasize oh at school. I, it was my imaginary friend, but it was my imaginary planet. And it would kind of playing and circle around me and protect me. And people would every day, you're the ugliest thing I ever seen. And I'm like, you saw me. You didn't see me. Use proper English if you're going to put me down. You fucking idiot. Hello. And um, I always knew it was them, though. And I always wanted to kill me because I was different. I just looked different. I didn't speak English when I came to America. They just It was like on, right? So I created my own planet. And then six years ago, astronomers found Planet Nine. They found Planet Nine, and that's what made Pluto not a planet. And I was like, what? holy fuck, they found my planet. And I don't know why I had this leap of thought, but I was like, I must make music for my planet. And I don't oh know, so God, I did. So um, and, and, I, and I worked on it. I made it. I worked so hard, you guys. I worked on it at one o'clock because I wrote my book at the same exact time. So they go kind of oh, together. Shit. But Planet Nine, I mixed it on something called a 432 hertz, HRZ frequency. Ooh. Most music that you hear on the radio is maximum 440 hertz frequency. And it is aggressive on your head. And they do that because they switch to 432 when they go to commercial breaks. So it relaxes you and you're more likely to listen to the commercial. Nazis also use the 442 frequency, 440 frequency. Oh, like a brain, like getting into um, your So the 432 I mix, like, uh, no, just kind of agitate. It agitates people. The frequency upsets you. So I was like, what if I can use something like almost an ASMR, like a tool that's about sound that heals trauma because I was going through a very period. People didn't know this, but Harvey Weinstein was literally terrorizing me behind the scenes way before the articles and all the news broke. You know, while I was writing my book, it was on. Like I had people, I had bug, like I had uh, recording devices found in my house, they hacked me, they broke into my garage and planted a tracker in my car. They were flying drones behind my windows, like every day, like like just hovering outside, like oh God, that's terrifying. On. Like Jesus black SUVs at the <gasps> outside of my house, oh part my day and night, just like God. you know Shoot where detective you live. Shit. Where you and Shoot detective shit. Like, and also shit. like oh all my God. it. You don't need, like someday I'll tell the story, but it's so big that it's just it's insane. It's literally the, the most shit. insane. And they had a million dollar bounty on Brave. Someone was going to be he hired an Israeli intelligence firm and hired spies um, to infiltrate I my life. About that. And they that get a million dollars if they stole my book for him before it was published. And they succeeded in stealing 125 pages. So my rapist was in my head and my thoughts before anybody else, before I was ready to even release it to the world. It's sick. It's sick. And this was all uncovered by Ronan Farrow, the journalist who won a Pulitzer for it. You know, it's all backed up. What a moment. Well, thankfully, this all has a happy audio. The spy (laughs) going, uh, they have me saying to her when she's recording me, um, they've uncovered the audio and she, I say, you're the only person I can trust because I thought she was my friend. Oh, fuck. Wait, so someone like infiltrated and was like all up in your being your friend and like close in your heart. Recording <gasps> me, secretly recording me. Oh my me God, this is like Homeland friends. shit. This is like Homeland, girl. Um, they were like, they were she's a women's rights activist, all a lie. The <gasps> Mossad is the Israeli this is Claire CIA. Dane's, Claire Dane's she shit. Was. What? So it was ask, real. And, that's and nobody crazy. knew about that. How do you recover from that I shit? Could feel, How do you trust I could feel shadows. that? I made planet. Yeah, people, I just, I have to blindly trust because um, otherwise I'm I'm hard and otherwise I'm like them. So I just hope for the best when I meet people. And if I get hurt, I get hurt. You know, and it yeah. sucks, right. and it, it is really bad, and like, and you don't know. I really don't know, but I hope for the best because I'm an optimistic person, and maybe dumb that way. But I, yeah. if I was, if I became somehow, I came through this not being particularly jaded, which I don't even know how. But um, 
I mean, it's, I hope for the best that's all we can do. But Plant 9 was really instrumental in my healing and keeping me from a traumatic place. So why I suggest people listen to it for the first time? Afterwards, you can dance because there's some bangers on there. You can freak out. You can do whatever you want. But the first time, I really suggest that people shut their eyes, lay on the floor. So you've kind of got this earth energy. It's a 38-minute experience. And it's a beautiful like way to, if we can't travel outside, we can travel inside. And that's I like why that. I decided to release it now. Oh my God, amazing. So and Planet cool. Nine is available on that's all digital precious. platforms, Bandcamp, Spotify, right? All those things. Okay, all those gorgeous. things. All those, all those things. things. Okay, I wanted to take a little, a quick trip back to the 90s, if you don't mind. Would you, would you mind, Rose? A little trip back to the 90s? <laughs> I do have to confess that I am sort of a fangirl. I'm like, I've loved you for so long. You've been like one of my so idols. Long. Like so long. You've like, it's, you're in my female DNA. Like you, you gave birth to me oh, and you her. don't even know it. <laughs> I, I, I love that. That makes me so proud and happy and Although a lot of times it wasn't for me, I wanted to, I didn't like the people I was around in Hollywood, but I, I would like try to literally communicate with the audience. I'd be like, yeah. do you see me? I'm here. See, that's, well, I that's what I wanted. I people connect to me. That's what I wanted to ask you, like, because there's so many, like, iconic moments that I, like, I just remember you, just your image and even just you in an interview or something. And it was so inspiring to me. And then. And then I hear your stories now and how like what you were going through back then. And I wonder what it what it feels like for like, you know, those moments that may have been really hard for you that actually like inspired other women. Yeah. Right. I did. I was like, I'll take one for the team because I know I can show people how to be different and be OK. I know that. Because yeah. I've lived my whole life in a way like when I came from growing up as an experiment, what if we raise these children not as a race or a gender? What would happen to them? And then all of a sudden they gendered me when I went to America. They put a pink button down thing on me at school. And I learned I was a girl. Like, here's what a girl is. And I was like, what? But I was old enough. Most people get it when they're four or five when they first go to preschool or school. You get told you're a girl. You get told you're a boy. And this is what you're expected to be. Here's your straight jack. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I was old. Like, I don't want to be like you people. I don't, right. I don't, I don't respect you. I resent you. And I'm, and, and you only want me to be like you for your own comfort. So you have exactly. to become okay making people uncomfortable because yes. it's not your business what they yeah. do. Right. And so these, I was always like, I was desperate to connect with and show people out there. I'm like, I was like, wouldn't you rather be like us, the free people? We're so much more fun. Oh my God. Good. Absolutely. Job. It's fun on this side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, really is that's what they don't it's so much they fun. don't get they hate, they hate they hate and i'm like yo we have so much more fun than you bitter asses we have yeah, so much uh, more fun than you stuck in your lot less straight jacket too. that you're supposed to be oh my god yeah. i mean oh, yeah it's, it's like yoga it's fabulous and we don't have to wear <laughs> khaki pants it's really nice well speaking of fun you recently tweeted an article about that infamous dress that's still in 2020 we're still talking about till this motherfucking day and girl that moment like you wrote uh you tweeted more often than not and especially in case of the media the naked dress reveals more about the watcher than the wearer word word which i that's love so true. But in that moment, that was in the article. That was in the article, but yeah. that's their headline. Yeah, so yeah, yeah you like the headline. Put, the article was a saying. better headline. Yeah, you. Yeah, and and the thing is, is like that's true. I was slut shamed globally. Like you would not. Nobody had done it. Girl, like, I was obsessed. <laughs> Why? Obsessed. What they misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, what they misunderstood about it. I've, and I'm so, and you know I am proud of that because I was like it was kind of like honestly there's a dark side to that dress and there's a beautiful side to it in, in terms of my experience of the whole thing uh, and it was like but I was like oh you know I was like I'm gonna bring it but also it was my first public appearance after being sexually assaulted and I I thought wow. in my head and if you notice you look back at the photos. A lot of the women who, and they've worn beautiful versions of it through the years, other girls, but they do it to be sexy. That's not bad. That's fine. They feel sexy in it. But it's done in a way to attract the male gaze. Yeah. No, and mine was different. like, 
Mine was like at the end of like the movie <laughs> Gladiator when Russell Crowe was like, are you not? Because the ultimate shot on the red carpet for them is if they can get your ass in the face in the same shot. So I was like, oh yeah, you guys just want a Here fucking body? I'll show you a fucking body. Let's go. Yeah. But um, yeah. I did it with power. I yeah. didn't do it with my hand on it. Like that was later shit. But I, did, I wasn't like, Hi, <laughs> like that. It was more like, yeah. Is this, you want to play? Let's play. And it was power. And that's it what it was. flipped rock, people girl. with. It was- it was, it was punk, punk as fuck. Rock. It was punk. It was punk as fuck. It was so punk. I, I always thought of that when I was a kid. I was like, you know, I, you know, I, I was step up, always obsessed with being in St. Mark Street and Alphabet City, seeing all the punks. And I, I, you were the beautiful punk. And and I saw that. I was like, oh, this is a, this is like a, this, this is my, this is my punk princess. <laughs> I thought of you yeah. as my punk princess, really. <laughs> oh my god, it was awesome! It, it was it awesome. So much. And like for me, as it's it was funny as like a woman of trans experience. Like for me, it was like so freeing. Like it was just like, oh my god, that's what freedom looks like, or like what it must oh, wow. feel like. Because for me, yeah. I was like you know so trapped in my body and so not even just my body, just in society too. And I was like, society, well, yeah, what? the reaction to you is, is what the headline was like it says yeah. more about the viewer exactly so what you were getting growing up is the reaction was the other people's reaction and yeah. but it's dumped on you as if it's your problem and, right and I want to say and you want to say, say it's not your fucking problem it's their problem girl which is right. not your issue well, Dot it com. freed me. Thank you so much for that. Oh, you you yeah. are in my female <laughs> DNA. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Every I feel like I raised these kids worldwide. I swear to God, I like mean, raise them to be awesome. like. There's like the ten percent. Like there are people that like just know my name, and then there were people that went deep into my work. Girl. And I have, those like, are the I ones mean, that I attracted to and always told they were weird. And I was like, you're not weird. You're the ones that are sane. It's everybody else tr- that you make uncomfortable because you're unique. And we have to celebrate our uniqueness. And we, like, in my lyrics in a song called Green Gold Plant Nine, the chorus is, only here to paint colors on the sun, only here to see the fires run. Because I think they, like, if we had, a, if our emotions are a big colorful paint box, right? Yeah, and we had a million, million, million long paintbrush. Wouldn't you want to use the sun as your canvas? And don't you want to use that as a metaphor for how we're supposed to live our lives big and broad and colorful and out there and like experience all of it, right? Internally yeah. and hopefully externally, yeah. but definitely internally. And I think we're just met and we get stolen so young and told like, like think of the English language. It's so frustrating um, because I grew up with different languages that had a lot more. Like, you could say two words in German, and it means the fresh smell of new lawn, right? Yeah, the yeah. fresh smell of new grass, which is a, a, like a feeling and a smell, yeah. but they're describing it with, like, two words. And then you have happy, sad, mad, glad. These are the it's words so we're allowed to use in English for our emotions. Those are basic pebbles and bam bam Flintstone shit words I've ever yeah. heard. Like, happy, sad, mad, glad. That's like two-year-old words. Come on. Yeah, yeah like, I thought we, that. We can do better. I was living in Greece at one point, and I was learning Greek. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's so much... Like, like they would say a sentence and then, like, translate it into English. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so beautiful and poetic. And they're just saying, like, I love yeah. how you, your hair. And then it's like, it just sounds so much more poetic and beautiful and with full, full of emotion. Yeah. And then when you break it down to English, it's like, your hair is and nice. Like, awesome. <laughs> your hair is pretty. Your hair is right. pretty. And there, <laughs> it's like your hair gives me, like, sparkles in my soul. And you're like, oh. I, Yeah, and language is so important and how we, we, we use language, you know? That's why I fuck with the mail all the time. I fuck with, I fuck with people you're not supposed to fuck with. I fuck with the New York Times. Yeah. I fuck with Washington Post. I drag them on the regular. Because they do stuff like, you know, two <laughs> years ago, the New York Times had a headline. It's the 20th anniversary of the Monica Lewinsky scandal. And I'm like, your headline is the 20th anniversary of the Bill Clinton scandal. Hello! It's just a shift in thought. Thank you. I have such a problem with that shit. I totally agree. Oh, Holy shit. Drives me fucking crazy. The shaming. The shaming. That drives, drives me fucking... Oh, my bananas. God. I follow her, and she's fucking, and she's fucking awesome. And I know. I mean, I've met her, and she's like... That's, she it's so such a double standard. I want to see her in that dress. <laughs> 
<laughs> I want to see her wear that yeah. dress, honey. Walk, like walking free. Let her free her, free her, free walk her. Walk on a red carpet somewhere on that fucking dress. Because she's like, I've asked to do two talks with her, and she said no. And I think it's because I'm scary or something. You know, because um, you're punk. You're know, punk. Girl, you're the punk girl. You're the punk girl. Oh, so smart. She went. Yeah. To, she went. It ruined her life. She was 19. He took her into the Oval Office, sat her on the Oval Office desk, parted her legs, Thank inserted you. a cigar into her vagina, and then jerked off on her dress and sent her out. And then whole life was ruined. Yeah, like no, they don't they even were supposed to forget that. Yeah, and they they it's and like they're not even afraid of losing that. their power. Like that that's where it's like so. That's it's it's, it's so yeah. funny how like that's where like a lot of men's weaknesses is weak weaknesses it, their weakness is actually embedded in in their power like it's so strange. I think their weakness is because they're told they're like there are sociopaths. They've done tests of like yeah. the sociopathy level in in Hollywood, um, Silicon Valley, you know the internet people, and also um, DC politics. And it's off the charts the sociopaths there. And then you have all these hopeful people trying to change things or trying to live out their dreams or whatever it is. And it clashes with a sociopath who's come there to shit because they can. Yeah. And that's what really needs to systemically stop. No, motherfucker, back the fuck up. You don't get to eat my food today just because it looks good to you. You don't get to Thank cross you. the street in my lane. Step Hello. the fuck up. That's what I think. Yes. Oh my God. Well, Rose, thank you for joining us. Before we go, we want to. We have some rapid fire questions. Are you down? Okay. Okay. First one. This is a public service announcement. Uh uh uh. That costs extra. Well, it always does. It always does. <laughs> If you want to view our rapid fire round with Rose and all our guests from now on, just sign up for the That Cost Extra tier on our Patreon. Uh, what questions did we ask Rose? This oh, time? we did the 90s edition of Marry, Fuck, Kill. <laughs> that was good. That was good. The, ni- the 90s version. Of course, the 90s um, version. Then we did, uh, who would she love to invite to a fabulous dinner party, dead or alive? Loved her answers for that. Loved that. And yes. then what was her... Safe, safe word. word and i i honestly i wasn't sure we we're gonna answer that question she was super fast and super down to answer which i loved it she's like i got this she's like i got this we love rose here we love rose she's down. She's yeah so open and down so like yeah i, I think it's worth five dollars yeah sure. it's worth the five dollars help us out here kittens the link is below you'll get immediate access to all the rapid fire questions as well as extra um videos after each episode we're gonna record like uh Sort of like just little, wrapping little it treat. up. Little treats, little treats for you. Of, little yeah, goodies little for you. You know me. I, you know I love app and appetizer. I always order two appetizers. We always share it. Unless it's shrimp. Unless, I'm not sharing uh, shrimp. Unless it's oysters. We don't share oysters either. <laughs> we don't share oysters. Or crab boil. <laughs> no, no, we're not sharing. No, but this we're sharing again. with you. Link this below. Share. <laughs> and now back to our regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All right, Rose. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This has been really awesome. You, you are a fucking rock star. We love you so much here. You are love always you. welcome. Cheers. Stay safe. Sweetheart. Enjoy your time in Have Mexico. Have a great night. Be safe. Oh, bye. Mm-hmm. You be safe, too. Thinking of you. Bye, beauty. Bye, bye. bye. Oh, my God. That was Rose Girl, McGowan. We just chatted with <laughs> Rose McGowan. I'm dying. Oh my god. Okay, oh my god. comments. Any oh comments god. here? Now we're gonna take comments. Hi everyone. Girl. How are y'all doing? Sorry for the sound issue again. We had a sound it's like weird. Something when I turned I I unmuted when we started. Yeah. And then Yeah, it, I think uh, yeah, I got people uh contacting me. I was trying to not you know, no, but uh, weird. I, I, it it remuted. Kind of like it's it's annoying. I'm gonna be extra careful the next time. I promise. Sorry, everyone, but you know, Rose McGowan was here. We heard her. We heard her. Oh my god, that was awesome. <laughs> I honestly, she's like really fucking cool. <laughs> That's all I can say. Like she's so she's so smart. She's so articulate. She's you know she's she's an alien princess. Like. She, She's, she's, a, she's everything and she gets so much shit from so many different areas even from the trans course. community and I'm like girls sit settle down like you it's know too sick. you 
<laughs> like don't come for Rose, honey. We are part of the Rose Army, and yeah, yeah. You know what? She's 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 always been vocal and she's always been honest. And I think that people are obviously always going to be intimidated by that. Yeah. But like she keeps on doing it. She's not shutting her fucking mouth, and I fucking love that. Keep on talking, girl, because oh. we're listening. I'm well. I'm part of the ar- army. I'll meet you in Planet Nine. I don't know what train I have to take. Maybe uh, right now I'm not taking any train. We're gonna take helicopter. <laughs> We're gonna take a helicopter to Planet Nine. We're gonna I'll meet take a, I'll you take a lift there. to Planet Nine. Girl, I mean, she's made history, and I guess we have here too. Yeah, all right, y'all. Well, listen, we all we we have a Patreon now because we're trying to get some coins to yeah. keep our show running because you know we got bills to pay, honey. The lights got to stay uh, on in this house. We got to pay the e cam. We got to pay the switchboard. We got to pay the SoundCloud. We got to pay the Wix site. We got to pay for the lipstick, the lighting, the Why? beverages. Patreon. Girl. Just send us five dollars a month. Girl. It's all good. Nail clippers. <laughs> Everything, girl. <laughs> the gear. You know, I'm giving looks. The gear. This, this is going for free. I know this. <laughs> this is expensive. So listen, <laughs> kids. Find us on Patreon. Send us some love, and tune and in. Show love back. Tune in Monday, where we're gonna have our new resident spiritual advisor. Girl. Which we're gonna get red. <laughs> girl. <laughs> She's a witch, honey. She's a full witch. She has a, her whole like philosophy on. I don't know if I can say witchcraft, but like witchery. I'm gonna say witchery. She's witchery. It's Harry at the Star, and she's here to. So excited. I guess she transforms energy, and she wants to heal, and she wants to connect with people. So everyone, join in that day. Um, she's a lot of fun too. Yeah, we're gonna do a lot of like Q and A, like like question and answers with the with the comments. I know you want us to interact more. Um, yes. So that Monday seven thirty, it's gonna be very interactive with Harriet the Star, and yeah, stay tuned. We love you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Rose. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Rose, for fucking coming on. Yeah. Yeah. We did that. That happened. You're listening to Allegedly NYC. Allegedly. Allegedly.